you're watching this on YouTube and you have a question, comment, suggestion, or maybe you just want to find out more information about the product, you can find the link below. Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds with 3DGamingMan.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the GMC V1000 Phantom Case. A plain looking box that has very little information on it. The picture at the front pretty much the same on the other side along with the product name and some general information about it. Your typical case packaging material with styrofoam on either end and the case itself is in a plastic bag. They have this plastic on the top, the front, the side window as well as on the other shiny bits of the case just to protect it. Now this case is all black on the outside as well as on the inside and it is a mid-sized tower case. It kind of looks like it's a full tower case because it is rather large and that's good because it'll give you lots of space to work on the inside. Some people don't want to go all the way to full tower because it's too big but this is an excellent compromise. At the top they have this large ventilated area which can be easily removed by pushing in on either tab on either side at the very back like so and at the top they include two 120 millimeter fans and these fans exhaust air and putting this grill back is super easy just slide it in here first and then pop it down at the back note the branding their name GMC and the model of this case V1000 Phantom here at the front they include two LEDs, these are red, and these are drive activity LEDs. Now, this particular part actually slides back and you can install a three and a half inch or two and a half inch drive. They just slide into place like so. Conveniently located at the top are two USB 2 ports, a USB 3 port. Here's the microphone jack, headphone jack, you've got the reset button, which is recessed by the way, and the power button, which also doubles as a power LED, there's a blue action accent around the power button as well as two fan speed controllers for the top fans and the front fans. Note the mesh at the front of the case that carries all the way down to the bottom. They include three five and a quarter inch drives. Note the drive bay covers and how easy they are to remove. You just flip this lever on the left and they come right out. These also double as dust filters. The front panel can be easily removed by pulling at the bottom and once it is removed you can see that they include a pretty large removable dust filter. And actually this dust filter can be taken out like so but the fans are actually attached to it and to remove each fan individually you can just kind of pull the tabs on there and they come out rather easily. And by the way, these are 120 millimeter fans. There are two of them and they intake cool air. When removing the front panel though, you've got to be careful because these cables at the top are attached. The overall styling and appearance on this case is quite nice. They've got a combination here of glossy and non-glossy surfaces as well as some silver trim plus these intakes. They've got one on either side they really don't do a whole lot, but they look rather cool. And here's their logo. On the left side, they have this punch out to give you a bit more space on the inside of the case, as well as this tinted window. Same punch out on the right side panel, but no window. At the back of the case, you've got a couple of rubber grommeted holes, and these are for routing cables and or tubes through. Here's where the motherboard's IO shield plate would get installed. They include a 120 millimeter exhaust fan, plus seven ventilated expansion slots, and you've got four thumb screws, two on each side panel. And at the bottom, you can install a standard ATX power supply, plus they have a removable dust filter for the power supply fan. Included inside of the case is this box, and in it, they include a user's manual. This is a cover for the expansion slots at the back. I'll show you how that gets installed in just a minute four plastic cable ties, some screws, motherboard standoffs, a speaker, and the fan, and I'll show you where that goes as well. So you've got a couple of options here on the expansion slots. You can choose to use this cover to hide the expansion slot screws. You just line it up and pop it in at the top and at the bottom, and it's installed. 
or you can choose to install the included 80 millimeter fan. And by the way, this fan can be flipped so you can intake or exhaust air. It's completely up to yourself. To install it, just place it against the case like so. Use the included screws and attach it. This will give you some extra air circulation. Now this case fits ATX and mini ITX form factor motherboards. It is a mid-tower case, so there's not a tremendous amount of room to work on the inside, but still, plenty of space. Note the red motherboard tray, which by the way is not removable, but it does have a large hole on it for the coolant retention plate, plus lots of holes here for routing the cables behind the motherboard tray, and there is lots of space behind the motherboard tray to do that. As for drives, as I mentioned before, there are three five and a quarter inch drive bays, and by the way, these have a toolless design. Now there's a few options here when it comes to installing two and a half inch and three and a half inch drives. As you can see, these at the top here are two and a half inch drives. So there's three of those and they come out very easily. Pinch on either side, install the drive and put them in. And by the way, you will need to use the included screws to install two and a half inch drives. And at the bottom, as you can see, there are three three and a half inch drive rails. They come out the same way, pitch into your side. And these just require you to drop the drive in, kind of bend it a little bit, drop the three and a half inch drive in, as you can see, rubber grommets, and then put it back into place. That does not require any screws, but you can also install two and a half inch drives on these. Now you can actually install two more three and a half inch drives here, but they would have to be mounted using optional drive rails, and they would have to be mounted vertically, not horizontally. Now the video card length is approximately 300 millimeters. You could stretch it maybe to 310, but that would not leave you much on this end. Power supply length is around 270 millimeters and CPU height is approximately 170 millimeters. With the right side panel removed, have a look at the red motherboard tray. Again, you've got a large hole on it for the coolant retention plate, plus lots of cable management holes to organize the cables behind the motherboard tray. And note this punch out on the right side panel. That will give you lots of space behind the motherboard tray to organize cables. At the bottom, they include four rather large and tall feet, but these do not have rubber on them, which is a bit peculiar because of course, most cases well have rubber on the feet to prevent vibrations, but also to keep the case in place. It is good though that they are tall because if you do have this case on a surface like carpet, well, it will allow the bottom fan to intake cool air. And in this case, it's the power supply fan and that is rather important. Finally, have a listen to the stock cooling. Note that I did include the 80 millimeter fan at the back of the case. I'll just slowly increase the top and front fans. What most people are looking for today are bang for the buck mid-sized tower cases. And this certainly falls into that category. I mean, this case has lots of features. It performs well, it is affordable, and I like the overall styling on it. However, keep in mind that the plastic on this, eh, it's rather cheap. I can't say I like the shiny parts on the case. It looks good, but it will attract dust and fingerprints in minutes. Also, the steel on it isn't that thick, but that's an advantage in one way because the combination of plastic and steel does make this a rather lightweight case. Rating this product is rather difficult because while it does have lots of features, it looks great and is affordable, I can't get away from the fact that the plastic is rather cheap and the steel pretty flimsy. Overall though, this is a great product. Until next time, take care. How do you think this product stacks up? To vote, head on over to 3dgameman.com and while you're there, check out the pricing.